This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, everybody. My name is Chris Pia, uh, Town Council of Stratford Chair. Today is May 10th, 2021. It is 6 p.m. The, the Stratford Town Council uh, will be having a public hearing uh, today and for the purpose of this meeting to give testimony uh, to allow the public to call in and give testimony uh, regarding the housing strategies for Stratford proposal. Uh, so, Margo, I'd like to hand it over to you. I believe we have a couple of callers. The first caller is Kathleen Callahan. Okay, uh, Kathleen, can you hear me? Can Can you hear me? I can hear you. And just um, just uh, before you begin, and no, you're not being timed yet. Um, point of reference for everybody as well. I just failed to mention a minute ago. Um, we ask that everyone keep it to three minutes for the council rule of procedure. And when you speak, if you can just give your name and address for the record, and um, Ms. Paquette will keep the time. Thank you, Kathleen. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, um, and thank you, Margo. Uh, my name is Kathleen Callahan, and I live on Castle Drive in Stratford. Thank you, Chair Pia, all honorable members of our town council, and Mayor Hoydick for providing space for public comment this evening. My reason for calling in tonight is to express my gratitude and appreciation to the Stratford Housing Partnership for the rigorous work on the recently endorsed housing plan. Your efforts demand recognition. While reading the report, I was impressed by the depth of the survey analysis and recommended strategies. In days of deep partisan divide, this was a much needed respite. To the council, mayor, and her administration, I ask you to accept the plan as endorsed and begin the hard work required by its recommended actions. As Councilwoman Sheikh wrote in a piece published today, there is no timeline defined for implementing solutions. I support her call for the sake of our seniors, our entry-level workers, and our insecure homeowners to act and act now. Housing is always on the agenda of local governments, but over the recent years, it has become a controversial partisan issue across the country and the state with the General Assembly currently debating zoning legislation. I remain hopeful that my town of Stratford can see this as the partnership did and begin to define implementation steps based on the needs of all residents. I have found that when people are honest with themselves, we recognize that our sources of information for addressing a problem are usually ones that validate our initial opinions. Does inclusionary zoning improve the goal of affordable housing? I could search Google right now and find studies and data with outcomes that fit whatever I already believe, whatever any of you already believe. I worked at a local homeless shelter for a brief time six or seven years ago, while also working at a residential treatment center. My focus was on addiction services, and what a surprise it was to learn of the housing first model. Since sobriety first was my view, this was a full-on paradigm shift for me, one that seems so obvious today. Housing is one of the most researched social determinants of health. There are improved personal and community health and economic outcomes related to better housing options and access. I cannot imagine there's anyone, anything but agreement here that every Stratford resident deserves the dignity of a place to call home. Again, I appreciate the opportunity to express my thoughts and appreciate this evening and thank the partnership for their work. Thank you, Ms. Callahan. Uh, Ms. Paquette. The next speaker is Barbara Heimlich. Good evening. I'm Barbara Heimlich. I live at 91 College Street in Stratford. After having read the housing strategies for Stratford and especially the community survey results, I have several comments to make at this point in time. If you're going to consider zoning changes, it should be across all of the residential zones, not, not just in selected residential zones. Zones. For example, any changes should apply equally to all those districts. You can still retain the character of a zone, even though every one of the 12 local districts built homes that did, did not and do not meet our current zoning regulations on size. We can build thousands of units without teardowns. We can't, I'm sorry, we can't build thousands of units without teardowns. The town of Stratford does not have own or have the land to do it. The state is calling for 4,000 units. That would call for something dramatic again. We have no land. Why isn't the state not realizing we probably have more affordable housing per person than any town in Fairfield County? The reason we are so affordable is because we went from being a small, picturesque New England community to being a mill town in the late 40s and 50s. Our housing was designed for working class families, capes with less than 1,700 square feet to meet the GI Bill housing requirements. 
which is what most of our capes in Stratford are. The state wants 10% of our housing to be affordable. Right now, we are at 6.4%. If we get it up to 10%, we would have a moratorium on our town meeting the standard, which would not be dictated by a developer or state. We need 420 units to meet that present state mandate. Again, we have no land. We are not wealthy enough for public-private partnerships to be developed. The median income in Stratford is lower than other communities in Fairfield County, and there is a need for housing options that are less expensive and more affordable. About a half to two-thirds of the housing survey participants indicated they were, they were housing cost burdened, which means they spent more than 30% of their income on housing costs and one half to two thirds were concerned about their long term ability to be able to afford to stay in Stratford. Lastly, why are we have why are we having this special meeting? What is the time frame for us to make a decision? Also, where are the members of the housing partnership to explain the, the document that they created and to provide information to residents and town council members interested in learning more about our obligations to the state of Connecticut. I thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you, ma'am. Ms. Piquet? There is no one else um, that has signed up. Okay, so I'll open, is there anybody else who, I know a couple people called in uh, when, when the other speakers were speaking. So I'll allow the opportunity. Is there anybody else that has called in that would like to speak specifically at this public hearing regarding the housing partnerships, excuse me, housing strategies for Strat? Again, is there anybody else that has called in that would like to speak? Okay, uh, hearing none, uh, Ms. Fiquet, I'll call the public hearing. Um, I'll adjourn the public hearing at 6.07. And we will be beginning, excuse me, we will be uh, starting the regular public hearing um, for the for the regular scheduled town council meeting at 645. Thank you all. This conference will now be recorded.